A penguin is a bird that cannot fly. He is a man. He has a name. He's Oswald Cobblepot, the Batman villain known as the Penguin, and we're going to tell you all about him as this geek history lesson is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason Black and White Inman. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or DC villain from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. And who are we talking about this week, Jason? Today's person is, well, he's, I guess, well, he is a person, but he likes to act like a bird. He's the penguin. He's Oswald Cobblepot because, uh, you know, he's making an appearance in this recently new film that we're talking about. We've been talking about it quite a bit. The Batman. So we thought we'd talk about the penguin. And, you know, fun fact, he's actually one of the few Batman villains that we haven't covered yet, which is strange. I thought, you know, 400 episodes in, you would have figured we would have covered the penguin. But we have not. And fear not, listeners, we will have no spoilers in this podcast for the Matt Reeves film uh now also this lesson was not suggested by any of our listeners ashley not a single one i was surprised by this so listeners uh if you know of any bat villains that we have not touched yet any stragglers out there that you think we should cover where can they do that ashley you can do that at geekhistorylesson.com facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson uh, at ghl podcast on twitter or on our brand spanking new instagram at geekhistorylesson now, like always, this isn't a podcast where we state literally everything that ever happened to the Penguin because he is a Golden Age villain. He's a Silver Age villain. He has 80 years of history. So we're just going to bring up the most relevant details so you get a good baseline because it's impossible to cover this entire character's history in about an hour. So let's get started, shall we, Ashley? Let's do it. All right, let's hop into the 10 cent origin. That is the first part of the podcast where Jason is going to tell you all of the basic things that you need to know in case you go to a Gotham-themed cocktail party and someone is like, who's this Oswald Cobblepot guy? All right, he is, of course, a DC Comics character. His first appearance was in Detective Comics number 58 in December of 1941. So this is his anniversary year. Wow. He was created by Bill Finger and Bob Kane. His alter ego is Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot. His team affiliations are, well, his home, you know, his business that he owns, the Iceberg Lounge. But he has also been part of the Suicide Squad, the Secret Society of Supervillains, the Injustice League, and the Super Foes. And his notable aliases have been Mr. Boniface, which we'll learn about very quickly, Matthew Richardson, the gentleman of crime, Ron C. Cobblepot, Uncle, un, excuse me, Uncle Pengy, and the king Gross. of yeah, the king of Gotham. And his abilities, of course, are he is a criminal mastermind. Uh, he utilizes weaponized umbrellas and various other equipment, and he's rich, which uh, you know, of course, is a big superpower in the DC universe. Yeah, being a rich white guy is definitely like the number one thing that makes you either a hero or a villain in any comic book universe. It makes more sense if Batman fights other rich guys instead of punching poor people in the face. I'm yeah. just going to say that. All right, and just to let you know, that 10 cent origin was brought to you by a good friend of ours, uh, the Comics That We Love podcast. Now, the Comics That We Love podcast is returning for its second season, and host Zach McCrary is a lifelong lover of comics and wants to share that enthusiasm with the world. You can join Zach each week as he and a different guest. I've been a guest of his podcast. Ashley is going to be an upcoming guest of his podcast. And they discuss the stories that have captured their love of the medium and celebrate the people who created them. This season is filled with classic stories like Old Man Logan by Mark Miller, James O'Barr's Tortured Tale, The Crow, and the opener for season two, Batman the Long Halloween. So if you enjoy this episode, you're going to enjoy that episode as well. And you can look forward to stories new and old, as well as discussions with comic book creators and their upcoming projects. Now, don't forget, you can download or stream the Comics That We Love podcast anywhere that you listen to podcasts with new episodes releasing every Wednesday, just like New Comic Book Day. And be sure to check out the amazing first season. If you love Geek History Lessons, excuse me, you're going to love Zach McCrary's podcast. All right, now let's get... To the meet cute. That is the second part of the podcast where we tell you the first time we meet it a character and how cute it was. Ashley, where did you first meet the penguin? So I've told the story on the podcast before, but when I was uh, but a young warthog, I used to watch 
Batman 66 reruns on who knows what channel. I have literally no idea what channel we uh, watched this on, but some channel in Canada was re re airing them. And that was the first penguin that I ever saw was uh, OG OG classic penguin. Did you have Nickelodeon in Canada? No. Oh, okay. Because I know, I know for a lot of people, they watch Batman 66 on Nickelodeon. I didn't have Nickelodeon when I was a kid, so I don't know. We had Nickelodeon shows on other channels. Like we had a channel. What would have been the Canadian Nickelodeon equivalent then? Do you remember? I mean, do you know what there were now? shows that aired like there were channels that aired Nickelodeon shows like YTV aired some uh -huh. Teletoon aired some. But like there wasn't just one like you would watch like a Nickelodeon show on YTV and then you'd watch Dragon Ball Z or something like that. Listeners out there are Canadian listeners. Please let us know what is the Nickelodeon equivalent right now in 2021. I mean, I'm sure Nickelodeon is actually available there now. Oh, it's, actually, it's actually 2022. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. What is time, everybody? What is? I mean, it's kind of like the Batman movie. I thought this movie was supposed to come out three years ago, and it came out this year. Anyways, All right, so what's your meet cute? It's exactly the same. It's the purple top, top hat Burgess Meredith Icon. penguin. Um, I think I saw the Batman 66 movie before I saw Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. And that's the penguin to me is the squawk, squawk, squawk. I also, uh, fun fact... Ooh. Action figure spotlight. Um, there was a line of Kenner toys that they made between Batman and Batman Returns. And in this line, they sort of just did whatever Batman villains they wanted to because it was it was before Batman Returns. And in that, they threw in a Tim Drake Robin. I, I believe uh, I believe I gave you that version of that. Tim Drake Robin. It had purple backing out of like a back uh, cardboard. Yes, I know the one you're talking but about. But there was a penguin in a black and white like tuxedo with a black hat. And I had that penguin action figure. And so like to me, the first penguin I ever experienced was very much the Silver Age penguin. Wow. So there you go. Yeah. Burgess Meredith shaping futures uh, but from the afterlife. <laughs> excellent. Excellent actor. An outstanding actor. All right, let's get to the history 101. That is the main meat of the lesson where Professor Jason is about to teach you everything you need to know about so, Penguin. So I like to start this one out because we're going to be glossing over a lot of Golden Age and Silver Age histories here with the Penguin because like most of these villains is rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. He fights Batman. He goes back to prison. He fights Batman. He goes back to prison. So I want to give everybody a theme to think about during this lesson. Um, this is a villain that is underestimated constantly by many people because of his looks. And Batman once called him in and out. Yeah, Batman said this. Batman once said that Oswald Cobblepot is smarter than himself. And that's not a thing that many people would ever think Batman would say. But Batman has literally called the Penguin smarter than Batman. So um, also, this is something that's also interesting to note. He is one of the relatively few villains in Batman's entire rogues gallery who is sane. And mm, is in, that's a good point. Yeah, and is he's in full control. Like he doesn't commit crime because of his uh, uh, mental disorders or anything like that. He is just ruthless and extremely violent. Mm. Like a penguin. Is that does that work? I don't know. I don't I don't think so. I think as far as uh, as avians go, I think penguins are fairly I mean, they will sit at the edge of an iceberg and like push somebody in to see if there's seals there who are going to eat them. But I don't think they're particularly All right. ruthless. All right. So let's talk about when we first meet the penguin in comic book history first. And then I'm going to tell you his origin because his origin came later. But when we first meet him in the golden age of comic books in Detective Comics 58, he's only known as the penguin. And I thought we could recount his first crime in that very issue. So, fun fact, I read the original scans mm -hmm. of this comic online and not the comicsology version. Um, and when you watch, when you read the original scans, um, you get to see an ad right inside the front page for the official Superman crypto ray gun. And it's only $1, which I think wow. is a uh, And we're going to share a version of that on our social media. Uh, because I that made me laugh as soon as I opened the cover. So we're not smart enough to understand inflation, but I wonder how much that in the modern day equivalent of that. Someone uh, tweet us at GHL Podcast and let us know. I think I'm going to say twenty nine ninety nine. I'm pretty certain Google could do that very easily. But nope, I'm not doing it. All right. So on the first page, under a caption box that reads "Dick," meaning Dick Grayson and Robin. Dick learns that art can be expensive. That is literally what the caption box says. Uh, Dick and Bruce Wayne are at an art exhibit. 
And Dick thinks that he should take up painting to get those big bucks instead of asking Bruce Wayne for a raise in his allowance. So Dick and Bruce walk past the penguin. And behind the penguin's back, Dick Grayson makes fun of Oswald and calls him a penguin because Oswald is standing next to a penguin statue. He's like, hey, Bruce, look at him. He looks like a penguin. <laughs> look, Dick's not the smartest of the Bat Boys. Well, at this point, too, I think he's like 10. So yeah, I'll, at the oldest. I'll give him a pass. Um, suddenly, it is revealed that two paintings from this art exhibit have been stolen. And everyone submits to a search and the guards find nothing, even on the penguin. Later that night, the penguin just casually drops in on the biggest racketeers in town. And yes, that is how they are described in the book. And these guys take Penguin's word at how good he is at stealing art. And the penguin decides to call himself. They're like, hey, hey, pal, what do you call yourself? And he's like, well, I guess I shall call myself a penguin like others have called me. And they decide to let him plan the mob's next heist. I'm going to say this. You don't need to explain why your stupid name is your stupid name. You can just say that you have a stupid name. Yeah. So through a montage, there is a crime wave across Gotham. And the penguin and the mob steal several things. And one day, Bruce Wayne is at an auction house. He sees the penguin. He recognizes him. And he says, and I quote, that's the fatty dick and I saw at the exhibition. Beep. That is in dialogue. Wow. Uh, so Bruce puts it together that this is the guy committing robberies all around town. Uh, after this, Penguin kills the mob boss, takes over the mob. Batman attacks, sings, sees the Penguin when he attacks the mob boss's lair, rushes at him, and I quote, saying, better say your prayers, funny face. I love the golden age. Um, Batman is up here with all these insults. So Penguin gasses him with a trick umbrella. And as far as I know, this is the first use of the Penguin's trick umbrellas. He mm. uses them in his very first appearance. And through a series of hijinks, Penguin starts going by an alias called Mr. Boniface. You might remember that from the Tencent Origin. And he blames all the robberies on Batman. So the police now think that Batman is the robber and they want to shoot Batman on sight. Will you do me a favor? Yeah. Will you spell the last name? Uh, Bony face. It is spelled B O N I F A C E. So, am I not wrong? to be that person? Oh. But it's actually pronounced Boniface, which is a Napoleon's last name, which probably explains a little bit about the penguin's personality. See, uh, see, everybody, uh, I'm going to bring in a sound effect from another podcast. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Detail. Ashley fixed it. I wasn't trying to fix it. I no, just no, no, thought no. that was. That's a segment that we do on the Jason and Jeremy oh, show, okay. John about Justice League. Jeremy <laughs> fixes things. My co-host there fixes things all the time. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, but I, I didn't want to. I just thought that was Say interesting. Say it again for me. Boniface. See, I thought it was just a goofy, I thought it was just a goofy golden age name. But you know what? M connecting it to Napoleon with the penguin makes it smarter. That's smart. That's a smart writing. Well, I think, look, we like to laugh about the goofiness of the golden age, but. I think that also shows the quality of storytelling that these characters had right off the bat as well. Because mm -hmm. that's a really intelligent well, choice. Well, I was blown away that he has tri hit his trick umbrella right out the gun. It's the be it, honestly, like, justice for the trick umbrella, just mm -hmm. like justice for the trick arrows. The trick umbrella is very cool. So, the Penguin has blamed all of his crimes on the Batman. The Batman is wanted on sight. The police will shoot him on sight. They're, it's that severe. Um, but the penguin also has just now captured Batman, tied him to a chair. What is he? What is, what is he going to do? Batman starts tapping out a message in Morse code with his heel, and we learn that he, so that he has a Batman Morse code telegraph in the heel of his boot, which sends a signal to Robin's belt, and Robin receives it, and Robin comes in, beats up the penguin, and rescues Batman. Because Robin's the best. Um, but not before Penguin calls the cops on him. The cops show up. They started opening fire on Batman and Robin. Um, and, you know, we flash forward again. Penguin continues to rob places. And after a chase through a train yard, the Penguin escapes. And the Batman is finally called innocent by Gordon with a text box claiming the Penguin will cross paths with Batman again. And that is all that everything I just described happens in Detective Comics number 58. It is, it is a story that trucks. Yeah, but it was probably like 36 pages long as well. Well, you know, it was also like a dime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What's that uh, for inflation? I won't Google it. You know, 
Um, so, Ashley, I want to ask you, does anything stand out to you from this very first appearance of the penguin? It's fascinating to me that he's basically fully formed yeah. um, without a without like a government name, though. Um, I think that's he very funny. He doesn't get that until the Silver Age, actually. Um, which is very classic Golden Age mm-hmm. like villains, right? They get their dark origins later mm-hmm. when we become interested and never get over that interest mm-hmm. in villains. Um, I also find it very fascinating that he's kind of because Catwoman's been introduced by this point. Mm-hmm. He's kind of a Catwoman redux. Like stealing art is a white collar, quote unquote, high brow thing to do. Um, so where Superman was fighting people who were, um, actually doing bad things for the world, Bruce Wayne continues to protect the 1%. Well, I will say, and yes, Catwoman does make appear, I think the year before this. Well, and she was a jewel thief, which again, very like white collar, very like quote unquote high brow. she was also the cat. Yeah. yeah. So They're I, going for the, that animal motif, which Spider-Man will rip off in about 20 years. Yeah. So <laughs> I think this is very intentional, mm-hmm, uh, of mm-hmm. what they were going for. Um, all right. So here are some other of the penguins golden age hijinks uh while traveling across the united states on a train dick grayson spotted the penguin prompting batman and robin to investigate dick probably you know insulted him again behind his back they found the penguin was turning in criminals for reward money then Mm. busting them out of jail and hiring them into his gang uh and batman and robin ended the operation they routed up the criminals and during the fight the penguin seemingly drowned in the mississippi river the Mississippi River. Yes, there's a very specific reference to the Mississippi River. Okie dokie. Because so, they're traveling across the country on a train. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sure. So they're somewhere near the St. Louis area. Great. You know, so, you know, people in St. Louis or Chicago or anywhere in there, uh, just know the penguin might have drowned in your town. The Mississippi River goes that far north? Yeah. I have no idea. I truly <laughs> have no concept. <laughs> um, uh, penguin later meant the Joker mm. in prison. And both of them, when both of them broke out of prison, Penguin and the Joker competed against each other in a, like a robbery spree to see who could rob the best. Um, and who a, could rob the best? And then eventually they decided to work together. And when they worked together, that's when Batman caught them and they eventually got sent back to prison. Um, another hijink is on Penguin's birthday. Penguin received presents from other criminals. And uh, when the, cr- and whereas the prison, excuse me, when the, so many peas in this lesson, every guys, every so many peas. The penguin received presents from other criminals, and the presents were mocking presents. See, they were making fun of this guy. So it was like a Weight Watcher subscription and like a girdle and yeah. just like really bad fat shaming stuff. Yeah, and like, you know, cat toys probably or something like that. You know, make fun of the bird thing. So uh, <laughs> because of this, the penguin was like, well, I shall commit bird-related crimes. And of course, it didn't work out very well on Batman. Oh. And uh, <laughs> Batman and Robin, of course, take it, took him to prison, and that led to a round of applause. All right. Uh, the Penguin eventually set himself up as an underworld advisor, planning foolproof crimes for other criminals. And upon the successful robberies, the Penguin would then murder the crooks and then take their stolen loot. Batman posed as Bad News Brewster, an early sort of alias, kind of like Mattis Malone, and... Uh, And through this disguise, as a rival criminal organizer, he tried to take down the Penguin. But here's where that didn't work. The Penguin recognized that it was Batman. He was not fooled. Mm. Again, this might be, as far as I know, and I could be wrong, one of the first instances where a criminal saw through Batman's disguise. And it's interesting that they gave this to the Penguin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, again. And then retcon that away right quick. Again, yeah. Again, this is, this is, even from this, we're still in the golden age. And to me, I'm like, wow, the penguin is like legitimately one of his best villains. Like just in terms of like how smart he is. Mm -hmm. Um, Eventually, um, though, towards the end of the golden age, they softened the character of the penguin. And they only made the penguin commit crimes based around birds and penguins and all kinds of things. Uh, eventually, uh, though, Oswald would go on to form an umbrella company called Penguin Umbrellas Inc. Yeah. So take that, Batman. Inc. When you said umbrella company, I thought you meant you know like a like a tax shelter kind of thing. No, actually, a like, literal yeah, I know. <laughs> umbrella company. Although I assume it was a tax shelter as well. Yeah, I'm sure it was so. routed through like the Maldives or something. And that's kind of where we end the bright and shiny comic of the golden age. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, when we enter the silver age, that is where the penguin is going to get his first origin. But before we get to that, we need to speak about 
this bright and shiny comic. That is Aurora and the Eagle. So, Ashley, please tell us more about your new comic on Kickstarter in case anybody out there listening uh, does not know about how this comic can make them soar. Okay, friends, so you're probably saying, I remember you talking about this like years and years ago. That's true. But this time, if you go to auroraandtheeagle.com, you will find that you can buy physical copies of my prestige size issue. This is my original Canadian superhero immigrating to the United States to work with the best American superhero to become the best superhero she could be. Can I say superhero one more time? Maybe we shall see. So this is a 48 page extended first issue. This is her first arc as I always intended it to be. And it gets up to the point where when I very first thought about Aurora, she gets a chance to step up and become a hero of her own. I have my entire creative team back and we've already funded and are pushing toward the stretch goal of having fully colored pages like a real grown-up comic so if you liked when i talked about aurora and the eagle the first time if you like the intersection of identity politics and superheroes or if you like nice canadian folks please consider coming over and backing it you can get such great rewards as two covers you can get an advertisement on geek history lesson you can get a kickstarter consultation from me or script reviews because for your generosity and helping me make comics i want to help you make as many cool comics as well so come find it come support me just making art for art's sake this time aurora and the eagle.com is it just Aurora, Aurora and the Eagle.com? Yeah, it takes you right to the Kickstarter. You didn't have to get Aurora and the Eagle comic.com. Comic? I did not. It turns out you're lucky in that. <laughs> nobody else wants it. Uh, it's a trick I learned from Jason, and I'll give you other such tricks. We get the consulta- no, Kickstarter. No, it's fine. I just <laughs> it's one of those like for mine. I had to learn, you know you were like oh there's already a super we, best friend. We com. had to do that for <laughs> Jupiter Jet as well, and I think science was science comic book. I think com? I think we had to do that for Retro Diaries as well. We had the, to do the Retro, Retro Diaries, Diaries like yes, the Penguin. Yep, so yep, everybody, yep. I've read Aurora and the Eagle. Definitely go out there and support. It if you haven't at Aurora and the Eagle.com. When does the Kickstarter campaign end? It ends March 30th at 6 a.m. There you go. So you have until March 30th. So get at that. Speaking of getting at that, uh, let's talk about the Silver Age of Comics and Oswald finally getting at an origin. He finally gets an origin. <laughs> so uh, he also finally gets a name, Oswald Cobblepot. Now, during his early childhood, Oswald Cobblepot was the son of a bird shop owner and his invalid wife. His father died of pneumonia while he was still a young boy and convinced that his father had become ill from being out in the rain without an umbrella. Mrs. Cobblepot always forced young Oswald to carry an umbrella. The young Oswald was taunted by his classmates due to his rotund physique, waddling gait and umbrellas. And a tragedy stuck Oswald's life once again when his ailing mother died and her mounting medical bills forced the closure of the family umbrella business. Now, or excuse me, the foul business, excuse me. Furious that the law had taken everything he had, he vowed to become a criminal. Walk, walk, walk. Anyways, uh, we haven't done any of the walk, walk, walks, and, you know, it's we're in the Silver Age. We're getting close to Murgis, uh, Burgess Meredith, so we have to, we have to uh, reference. I don't hate the squawking. Because uh, a good actor can pull it off. Can pull it off. It's, I think it's a little overused, but I think you can do it well. Anyways, uh, I think it's better when it's like a laugh. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, Cobblepot later got connected with a person named Angie, who was his first contact in organized crime. Cobblepot, Angie's sort of like a mob enforcer, more but mob boss type person. Great. Cobblepot offered his services to Angie. Angie rejected him and said, get out of here, you penguin. And furious, Oswald vowed that the word penguin become the most feared name in Gotham City and took it as his criminal alias. Now starting to wear his trademark top hat and his suit, Oswald once more approached Angie and killed him on sight with one of his trick umbrellas. Wow. Uh, And as a result, one of Batman's most consistent and cunning foes was born. Consistent and cunning. The penguin. Uh, The Penguin's first confrontation with Batman and Robin in the Silver Age was over a series of thefts where he left clues to his next crimes for Batman to find. Now, I'm going to say this right now. Okie dokie. I don't understand the predilection of Gotham City criminals to telegraph all of their crimes to Batman. Yeah, scavenger hunts aren't fun. Well... (laughs) I actually do think they are fun. But no more. I'm like, you know, if you didn't telegraph it to Batman, you probably could have got away with it scot-free. Yeah, escape rooms aren't fun. 
Wait, do you think escape rooms are crime? You think it's a crime to go to escape rooms? No, every, I just think math isn't fun. <laughs> every every person that owns <laughs> and it's a, always math in an escape room. <laughs> every person that owns an escape room right now is listening, and they're like, "Oh, Ashley doesn't like my business model." I'll tell you this: um, advertise with us and convince me differently. <laughs> you know, I think the Penguin or the Riddler would run one hell of an escape room, and I would go to it. Right I, now. I think I do think that um, WB or Marvel or even. Um, like Amazon with Invincible not having superhero themed escape rooms, I do think is a missed marketing opportunity. It is a good area. Like as a super, like I say, it's the, you, you get trapped. The super villain has trapped you in the room. You yeah. Get, you have an hour to and get And like out. you're the team. Yeah. But if you don't get out, it's going to blow up. Exactly. Yeah, okay. All right. So Batman eventually tracked down the penguin and captured him with a clue that literally uh, came back to bite him when it was an egg. You see, it was an egg clue and the egg hatched Ashley. And out of this egg that Batman had, it was a baby alligator and it bit Batman. Uh, and that's how uh, Batman was able to track down the penguin. Uh, this defeat led the penguin going into semi retirement. However, he returned to plague Batman and Robin once more after being mocked again by criminals. Again, the mocking is consistent. And he staged a series of bird related crimes. And the penguin was once again foiled by the Cape Crusaders. Now, again, like we said, there would be a bunch more rinse and repeat crimes, including. This very interesting one that you know it has, it contains a character that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, while attempting to rob a bird sanctuary in Metropolis, the penguin was almost murdered in a complex plot wherein Catwoman hypnotized Lois Lane into attacking him. However, this plot was thwarted by Superman, you know, a, a person you might have heard of, and the penguin. Uh, next, gathered his gang and armed them with weapons of the future. To combat the modern crime fighting technology and Superman. I'm assuming it was ray guns, but I'm really just imagining like M60s. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with the exception of some uh, Robo Torellas. Do you know what Robo Torellas are? I surely don't. They're robotic umbrellas, Ashley, of course. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of these gimmicks and these future technologies, of course, were foiled by Batman and Robin. Uh, it was during this caper that the Penguins delivered a humiliating defeat when he was knocked out by Bruce Wayne's butler, uh, Alfred Pennyworth, who, in, you know, a funny, ironic twist, hit the Penguin over the head with an umbrella. Great. We love it. We love to see it. Uh, He was put in jail, and during this period, Oswald was briefly disappointed when he had heard out, he had heard of that bat about Batman's retirement, which was a thing at the time. And although this later turned out to be a ruse. Um, Yeah, DC was like, we need a hundred more years of content from you. So, Ashley, I want to talk about this. The pa- the Penguin and Catwoman have now been teamed up in two Batman movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the time of this recording, we have not seen the Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, let me ask you, do you like the choice of the bird villain teamed up with the cat villain in Batman movies or stories? Or is it is it cliche? That's interesting. I've never thought about that before. The, we're now, it's like two movies now we have them teamed up. Um, I guess it's fine. I mean, I've never seen either of them, so I, I don't really have an opinion on it, to be honest. I don't think. Wait, I think wait, wait. That's, have you never seen Batman Returns? No, we've talked about this multiple really? times. Really? Yes. Wow. I've seen the, the thing where the bird almost pooped in her mouth. <laughs> yeah, that very famous scene. Yeah. No, I've, no, I've uh, never seen it. Listeners, maybe we should do a. Uh, Absolutely not. <laughs> maybe we should do a, a Batman Returns retrospective. Hashtag Batman Returns, yes. I don't want to watch Batman Returns. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, what do you think about this? I mean,. Is there story juice in this idea? Absolutely not. Really? No, I don't think there's anything that other than the fact that they have the same animal name, I think there's very little that connects them. Mm. I would I would rather see them teamed up with other characters. I like seeing Penguin with other villains who think he's a dummy and then he outsmarts them. So l- let me just, you know, off the top of your dome... Who would you who would you love to see the penguin teamed up? With? I absolutely like and again, I haven't seen the Batman, so I have no opinion on how effectively it's done. I would have said Riddler. I've said that mm. Riddler is like the villain I want to see in a Batman movie for a long time mm-hmm. because Riddler thinks he's smarter than everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as you've illustrated here, the penguin's really smart, too. And I think I think if you're going to have two villains, I much prefer it as a rivalry than as a team up and oh, that okay. their chaos spins out into more chaos. All right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, moving along, the Penguin was among the many costumed heroes and villains gathered by Alexander Luther and the Harbinger 
during the Crisis on Infinite Earths to rally support for the slow merging multiverse from the destruction of the Anti-Monitor. During the storyline, the Penguin was dispatched to Earth S, that's the Shazam Earth, and clashed with the heroes sent to liberate that world. Now, Ashley, it's our favorite part of any DC podcast. Would you briefly explain to the listeners what is Crisis on Infinite Earths? There were so many multiverses, and DC said we want one universe, and so they created the Anti-Monitor, and he went and he ate them and he pooped out one universe. Yes. And everyone got rebooted, sort of. Yes. Now, following Crisis on Infinite Earths' conclusion and the collapse of the multiverse, as Ashley said, into one single universe, the Penguin of Earth-1 was erased from existence and replaced by a new version of Oswald Cobblepot. Uh, but... Like most of Batman stuff, you'll find this in many of the DC reboots. Most of the Batman's villains and characters stayed exactly the same. Uh, basically, Oswald's origin is exactly the same as it was in the Silver Age. But in this post-crisis world, the Penguin got meaner. Thanks to creators Alan Grant and Norm Brayfogle. And if you do not know those names, um, Alan Grant's a great writer. Norm Brayfogle is an amazing artist. And they have several collections that are called Legends of the Dark Knight by Norm Brayfogle. And you should all go check them out because it is a great and fantastic run. And we're going to talk a little bit about that run right now because they did a Penguin story in that run. What? Uh, now, during the storyline, when Penguin returned to Gotham, he met Mortimer Cadaver in prison. While in prison, they came up with a breakout plan. And the idea was that it should all start with Penguin's sudden death. So thanks to Cadaver, he used Hinopsis, excuse me, hypnosis to send penguin into a death like trance and the penguin was buried after his fake death now his henchman released penguin from his tomb and once he was revived he was forced to accept cadaver into his gang and they started a crime spree eventually penguin double crossed cadaver and shortly after he was stopped by batman now sometime later during the same run penguin escaped prison and located harold allnut a mechanical genius who Penguin manipulated to create a bird control device. Harold's machine allowed Penguin to control large flocks of birds with microwaves, you know, because in the 80s, microwave powers. Um, this forced the animals to create chaos and destruction in Gotham. And it was Penguin's intention to sell the machine to international criminals and kill Harold afterwards. But part of his plan was also kidnapping a notorious actress because you know, you need to do that. And also the penguin had become infatuated with her. I assume she was on L.A. Law and the penguin was like, oh, I just got to have this lawyer. You know, she's just so good with depositions. Um, and using the bird device, penguin kidnapped the actress and attacked Batman in the Batcave. Yes, that's correct, my listeners. Penguin figured out where the Batcave was because of all the birds. Um, however... As he was selling the invention to other criminals, Penguin's plan was thwarted by Batman, like he does, who had de deduced the device's mechanism. And Harold himself, who turned against the Penguin, allowed Batman to ultimately defeat Oswald Cobblepot. And actually, this led to Harold Allnut becoming an important supporting character in Batman for basically... The next 12 to 15 years. Yeah, he's this creepy guy who I was gonna lives ask in the you, bat cave and like fixes their equipment and looks at I don't like Harold very much. Oh, I love Harold. I know you do. I think he's really <laughs> creepy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, everybody out there, if you don't know who this is, the story that introduced Harold into the Batman mythos. Um, Harold is was basically in the, in the late 80s, early 90s and early 2000s. He was the leading designer and engineer of many of Batman's arsenal gadgets and vehicles. Uh, he built the new Batmobile. Um, he had diminished speech capabilities and his physical condition. Um, mm -hmm. He was disabled, uh, sort of. And um, he, But he was such an amazing uh, um, mechanic and engineer that Batman basically provided him. Harold lived in the Batcave for the next 12 years. Yeah, I th they draw him kind of like a Quasimodo yes, they do. type character. I would actually really love to see Harold brought into the live action space and cast like a really phenomenal like... Um, maybe actor with Down syndrome or something like that and like embrace like properly do because they never give him a specific condition. They don't even give him a fake condition. They just kind of make him like vague because it's the 80s yes. and they're they're not as aware as we. But I think there's enough there that you could sort of reinvent and update the character in an interesting way. Yes. I just always thought he was kind of scary when they uh, drew him. <laughs> oh, see, I fell in love with Harold because um, 
it, there's a brief storyline where um, Jean Paul Valley, when he takes over Batman Your as fave. Bats in the 90s, and uh, Harold doesn't realize that Bruce has left. Mm-hmm. And so, like, he comes up to the Batcave and, like, sees this scary, like, ah, like, mechanical guy. And he sort of, like, uh, cuts off his area of the Batcave and then goes to Tim and, like, gets, and he, like, he's the one that allows Tim and Dick back into the Batcave. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, I was like, oh, who is this guy? I didn't know this, like, little guy lived in the Batcave. Who, yeah. you know? <laughs> and then he, oh, he's helping Nightwing. I like him even more. Um, so that's, that's why I like Harold. All right, so back to the Penguin. Penguins soon realized that hands-on criminal activities always caused his downfall, and he decided to go legit in order to avoid being arrested again. Ah, oh, it's the story of the 21st century, as some would say. As part of his new plan, he found a way to manipulate the stock market and give the information to a large company earning millions of dollars. Ah, so he did the kind of crime that we like. Yes, he did rich person, 1% crime. Yeah. Uh, eventually, Penguin, with this money, established himself as a legitimate businessman, and he uh, bought a nightclub, the Iceberg, Iceberg Lounge. Lounge. Yes. However, that facade was only there as a means of controlling criminal activities from a privileged position, which even Batman allowed. And Batman would go to Penguin as a source of Mm -hmm. information from the criminal underworld. Um, This is sort of this is the start of, you know, um, you know, like it's like it's like the scene you see in like law and orders or, or crime movies where it's like it's the mob boss that we won't arrest because the mob boss will turn on his pals every once in a while. Yep. yep, yep and yep. this is basically what happens to the penguin for like almost the next 10 years. I always thought that was cool. Yes. Um, though he is arrested for criminal activity several times during the course of like this era, uh, his reform and his money always manages to secure his release from prison very quickly. Thanks to his high priced lawyers. Um, so yeah, I want to talk about this a little bit more, Ashley. Um, you know, this is the start of legitimate businessman, corrupt penguin. Um, this is probably the version of the penguin that most people know. Mm -hmm. Um, there even is a version of this in the Batman anime series. When they first introduced the penguin, he's a criminal, but then when we see him again, he has the iceberg Iceberg lounge. lounge. Um, is this your favorite version of the penguin or, I mean, do you, would you like him more as a criminal or do you like him as sort of like the mob boss that, he has this business. Everybody knows this business is corrupt, but he's not like bad guy, bad guy. Like he's not actually committing the crimes. Yeah. I like this a little bit more because I think it sets him apart from other DC comics villains. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it kind of shores up his relationship with the rest of the bat family in a, in a more interesting way than the Joker. Yeah. It sort of makes him a Lex Luthor almost. Yeah, exactly. You know? Uh, so as we fast forward, Gotham City is nearly leveled by an earthquake in the storyline No Man's Land, which is excellent. The Penguin stays behind when the U.S. government blockades the city by trading money that no one else in Gotham is able to use for goods. And he uses his contacts out the city, and he basically becomes one of the major players of a territory in this lawless city. Um, one of these connections that is discovered is that he has a connection directly to, as I mentioned earlier, Lex Luthor and his company LexCorp. And using the Penguin's information about No Man's Land, Luthor gains control of Gotham's property records, but Luthor dismisses him because the Penguin tries to blackmail Lex Luthor. Ah, uh, yes, the classic Luthor property scam. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, there's only one thing that, my father always said, there's only one thing they're never making more of, and that's land. Uh, thank you, Gene Hackman. Give it time. By the way, Gene Hackman apparently uh, rides his bike around New Mexico. Uh, every day, people say they see him. He lives in Santa Fe. Cool. Yeah, the retired Gene Hackman. There you cool. go. Great actor. Good for him. All right, there we go. Uh, the first Lex Luthor, as some would say. Uh, the Penguin plays a substantial role in Gotham Central. Ashley, would you like to explain to the listeners what Gotham Central is, in case they don't know? Gotham Central is the show that they should have made instead of making Gotham, and now they're making now, uh, which is a gritty crime drama set inside the GCPD. Yes. It's, it's awesome. It's Gotham from, uh, it's about 40 issues. It's Gotham from the perspective of the police officers. It's an amazing series. Um, so Penguin plays a role. Uh, former Gotham detective, this is when he was on the outs, Harvey Bullock, breaks into the Iceberg Lounge and puts a gun up to Penguin's head and accuses him of hiring the Mad Hatter to kill the 1996 Gotham Hawks championship team because the Gotham Hawks had just won the championship. Harvey is then arrested, and when he tells detectives Driver and McDonald his theory of the Penguin's involvement uh, due to a snitch who said the Penguin had lost big on a bet involving the Hawks. Harvey returns drunk later. He shoots two of Penguin's men and takes the Penguin hostage on the roof, 
threatening to throw him off, but he is talked out of it by the detective's driver, McDonald, who appealed to his years spent as a cop, but not before Bullock knocks the penguin unconscious. So um, this is part of like Harvey Bullock's redemption, redemption. arc. Um, we could do it. By the way, there is enough on Harvey Bullock that we could do a Harvey Bullock geek history lesson out there, everybody, if you really wanted to do it. Um, but I just wanted to mention it out because Gotham Central is amazing. So after participating in several major Batman events, including Infinite Crisis, Batman R.I.P., and so on, Penguin finally climbs to the top of the Gotham City food chain after the death of Bruce Wayne and Batman R.I.P. He becomes the major crime lord in Gotham. He gets to the top. He is soaring like an eagle, as some would say, only to meet the most destructive force in all of DC Comics history. Ashley, do you know the villain that I am referring to? Batman? No, uh, the ever talked about reboot. <laughs> so Oswald gets to the top, gets everything he wants, and then DC reboots their universe. Well, see, he couldn't soar because penguins are flightless birds. I know, but I wanted to give him a chance. Couldn't. Uh, so, yep, DC Comics rebooted their continuity again, an event called Flashpoint slash The New 52. Uh, and Ashley, again, like our listeners, love it every single time we do it. Uh, would you like to explain Flashpoint slash The New 52? Because I know they love hearing it every single time. Jeff Johns wanted Barry Allen back, so Barry Allen missed his mommy. He ran back in time. He changed the timeline, kind of, sort of. People got lines on their costume, and uh, Green Lantern and Batman didn't really change that much. Except some of them did. Mm -hmm. because in the new 52 the villains did the mainstay characters yeah, you're, didn't really you're change. the penguin gets a brand new origin oswald chesterfield cobblepot was born to tucker and esther cobblepot in 1970 and yep they did time stamp it big mistake big mistake in comics um oswald was born with a birth defect that left him with a penguin-like nose an appearance that horrified his father so much that his father dropped him on the ground moments after birth while growing up he was bullied by his older brother so he has siblings now and he was also bullied by his peers who compared him to a penguin which i'm just gonna say by the way i've never looked at somebody and be like that looks like a penguin because i don't see penguins in my everyday life yeah, maybe you would say a bird. Yes. But I don't think you would specifically say a penguin. Yeah. A night during Oswald's childhood, his older brothers attacked him and his pet birds because Oswald loved birds. And they finally went too far for Oswald to handle. Um, because of this, Oswald said, to hell with people. I'm only going to talk to birds. And he felt closer to birds than he did people. And Oswald began his plan to secretly murder Oswald. Everyone in his family, one by one, to make it look like accidents. He, he killed his brother, Jason, with poison. He killed William in a hit and run. Uh, and he killed Robert in a freak accident, which left him at the bottom of a frozen link. Oswald would also go on to kill his own father and finally gain his mother's only attention. Uh, later on, of course, he later made Batman. He became a villain. And in this version, would eventually go on to open the iceberg lounge again in this version of continuity, even fighting off a villain, a faux villain named emperor penguin, which we're not really going to go into, mm -hmm. but I want to end this lesson uh, with a fun character that we both like. Um, there's a war between the penguin and the red hood currently in DC comics, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, now real quick, in case anybody doesn't know who's the red hood, just very briefly. Jason Todd, the second Robin who died and was brought back. Yes. Now Jason Todd received a letter that he believed he came, that came from his deceased father when he was a boy. The letter revealed the truth that his dad, Willis Todd, had taken the fall for a crime that the Penguin had actually committed, and that Willis's death was faked to participate in a secret, excuse me, a secret science experiment in prison. He was determined to exact revenge on the Penguin and furious that his entire life had been built on a lie because you know he basically only stole the tire off the Batmobile and met Batman because his dad was in prison. Uh. Red Hood shot Penguin in the head right through his monocle, seemingly killing him. And ironically, Red Hood had shot Penguin with a blank. I don't know why his gun was loaded with blanks. I don't really understand why you would carry around a firearm with blanks in Gotham City. It's a dangerous city. Uh, but because of this, it allowed the Penguin to survive the point blank shot by the skin of his teeth. And he would be a hospitalized and, excuse me, and eventually recover and return to his position at the top of his empire. Now with an eye patch 
where his monocle used to sit. And that's where we're going to leave this podcast because we don't want to get too close to too many spoilers in any current storylines. I would just like to say that if you shoot someone with a blank at point blank range, you will still kill them. People have done that to themselves. That's why the penguin lost his eye. Yeah, but he should be dead. You can do that. People have done that to themselves on movie sets, so be careful with blanks. Well, here's the the falsity of, and, you know, recent events, we, you know, like over the last year, um, if you've ever dealt with blanks, they yeah they ex- still expel stuff from the gun barrel and gas and at bullet speeds yeah so that is very dangerous yeah uh so I just wanted to add I know I know it's like nitpicking because it's comic no, books but what? I wanted to bring that I'm up. happy to promote weapon safety on any podcast <laughs> so uh, there you go so, but that's where we're gonna leave the penguin uh, but we do have something else for everyone that waddled through our lesson we have another geek history lesson giveaway. <laughs> To celebrate eight years of our podcast. Uh, Today, we're giving away the Batman Year One Commemorative Edition 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray. How do you get it? Well, this is what you got to do. You got to go to Geek History Lesson on Instagram. Where is that, Ashley? At Geek History Lesson. Yeah, pretty simple, right? Uh, You just got to look for the post that says Batman Year One. We'll have a picture of the Blu-ray. Then, what you got to do, go write a review on Apple Podcasts for this podcast. And if you've already written one, write another one. Use your grandma's account. Uh, you got to like the Instagram post of the Batman Year One Blu-ray. You got to share that post in your Instagram stories and tag the at Geek History Lesson account. And you have to follow the at Geek History Lesson account. And then in the comments, tag a friend in the post who you think would like the geeky content and also who you think would like GHL. And it'll help grow the podcast. And that, you'll be entered into a chance to uh, enter the to win the Batman Year One Commemorative Edition. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's a really cool Blu-ray. Also, asterisk, um, domestic only, unless you are willing to pay for shipping. Yes, just uh, because international shipping rates have gone up. Yes, we're happy to pick a, a inter- an international listener, um, but you will have to pay the shipping because of that. But, so go on over there to Aggie Kitchen Lesson on Instagram and get the Batman Commemorative edition. It is still shrink wrapped. Everybody, it is brand new. Mm-hmm. It's great. Mm-hmm. That's a fun mm-hmm. Blu ray. Uh, and now to the recommended reading, Ashley. What is that? If you listen to this and you loved all the penguin talk, you go to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. And we have a bunch of suggestions for you. You click on the widget, you buy some of it, and then you get to read them. That's correct. The first one is Legends of the Dark Knight, Norm Brayfogel, Volume 2. Uh, this is the great Detective Girl Comics run from the late 80s. Uh, this is where they made the Penguin more vicious. This specifically connects the Penguin Snow and Ice story, which is the fake death story that I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, fun fact, it is one of the first, because um, I found this issue at a pawn shop, one of the first Penguin stories I ever read. So I think you should uh, definitely read it. Penguin Pain and Prejudice. Great it's another story. one. It's a uh, best-selling author Greg Huritz examines uh, basically the dark past of the Oswald Cobblepot origin. Um, this is basically the origin where I said like he was like one by one taking out the family members. Mm-hmm. And then a fun one. I decided to put a fun one on here. Uh, Batman Earth One by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank because it's a fun alternate world story where Oswald Cobblepot is the mayor. Mm-hmm. And I thought it might be interesting to see um, and look at a DC Comics world where Oswald is not completely villainous and he's still you know he's still evil but he's legitimately evil dun, dun, dun. anyways so there you go there are some fun uh if you want to read more about the penguin go check it out now we're going into the teaching tweet jason's favorite part of the podcast we're in uh however many characters you're allowed to have on twitter now characters are less he's going to sum up everything he just taught you and this will come out on the tuesday that this episode drops at ghl podcast on twitter Perhaps the most dangerous animal to a Batman is a fowl that has to adapt to its strengths, be cunning, and attack swiftly like a penguin. And that's it. There you go. Good job. Science lesson, everybody. And now we're going to the honor roll, uh, where if you leave a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts, we give you a shout-out on the podcast and, uh, you know, Read whatever you write because you help us grow in the Apple algorithm. So, Ashley, Mm -hmm. who is joining the honor roll and welcoming me into the teacher's lounge this week? We have two sweet friends joining us today. We have Dan W13124 who says, wow, 
This show is amazing. I first heard about it from a friend at work and have been hooked ever since. That's thank a good you friend. And thank you, friend at work. Yeah, t- 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 where's your friend? Let's talk to them too. <laughs> this show has uh, made a long workday fun with Jason and Ashley's fun and informative content. The hosts are very knowledgeable and full of fun energy every week. I even have to thank them for turning me on to the phenomenal show, The Expanse. Oh, you're welcome. This was a show I was sleeping on until your episode of the series. Thank you so much for all the hard work and keep it up. And who is next? And they are also joined by very fittingly Bat Family fan God, that, who that says out. great content. That's an accident, by the way. I'm just going in chronological order. <laughs> who says I first started to listen to this series on YouTube. I really liked the first one I watched. So I started looking up the characters and teams that I enjoyed and listened to their history and other people's opinions on them. I was listening to their podcast in the background while I was doing other things, and it made those things a lot more enjoyable because of how much fun the podcast was. I recently started listening to them on Apple Podcasts because it has a lot more up-to-date, that's true, and is easier to listen to. That's also true. They make very fun and informative content, and I really enjoy how they love the characters as much as I do. While listening, you can really tell how much they love talking about the characters or teams that they've read about for years. The final and most favorite part of this podcast is that they have sorry it's a typo uh have so much knowledge about what they are talking about overall they both make very fun and entertaining content thank you also not shaming you the typo that was shaming myself for not being able to look, read it look i typos just, happen if you're if you're typing with your thumbs on your phone it ha- i will say as a person with big thumbs happens to me all the absolutely time. i i constantly and ashley can attest to this i constantly send texts that have nothing but typos and i'm just like <laughs> i'm not retyping this i have big thumbs <laughs> but uh welcome who is uh just in that family fan so uh, welcome that family fan and welcome dan w one three one two four yes welcome into the teacher's lounge where professor uh boniface Boniface. Boniface. Boniface is teaching umbrella building. There you go. Yeah. So it means nice face. Does it really? Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Oh, see, that's the penguin. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. It's just the last thing. Uh, welcome into the teacher's lounge, you two. And if you want to join them, go over to Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review. Also, don't forget to subscribe and follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And just like uh, one of our amazing listeners, if you think somebody out there would really enjoy this podcast, please tell it to them. That is the best way to grow this podcast. Um, Ashley, where can they follow this podcast on social media? You can follow us at facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson, on Twitter at GHL Podcast, because they didn't have enough letters to type out Geek History Lesson, and on Instagram at Geek History Lesson. And then don't forget to visit our website, geekhistorylesson.com. We've introduced a blog portion this year, so you get more geeky content every Thursday. And if you like Bat Family stuff, we have a lot of Bat Family stuff right now. A lot of Bat Family stuff coming up. And guys, don't forget, also, we have a Patreon over at uh, patreon.com slash Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N. Not only do you get bonus podcasts like Jason and Jeremy John about Justice League, our Justice League review podcast, and Jason and Ashley's Excellent Adventures, where Ashley and I get personal, but also we have a GHL Extra podcast every single week. And this week's episode is, should Batman's villains have superpowers? A very interesting discussion mm. about some Batman villains, you know, very ties in because Oswald does not have superpowers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. So head on over there, get more hours of us chatting than you will ever need in your life at patreon.com slash John. And thank you to the super friends who already support us over there. Don't forget you support Ashley and follow Ashley on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N. And now we're finally to hashtag stick around the final section of our podcast where we make sure you stuck through all the plugs. Ashley, final discussion here is, Mm. do you like the penguin being a normal dude with a big nose or do you like him sort of being grotesque like Batman Returns or even in between the two? Where he's slightly grotesque, where he has flippers and a big nose, but he kind of looks like a normal dude like they did in Batman the Animated Series. What What is your preferred physical appearance for the Penguin? I am anti-flipper. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's too silly. Um, just make him a dude with a big nose. Mm-hmm. People have big noses. I have a big nose. Who cares? Well, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Are you fine with what you have seen from like Colin Farrell, like in Colin, like they're, with Colin Farrell, they're just kind of making like a chunky dude with a big nose. Um, I am fine with that from a design standpoint. I am not fine with um um actors taking work away from bigger bodied actors. I think that's a whole other discussion mm-hmm. to be had. Um, 
But in terms of just the look, just talking about the look, yeah, that's closer to what I want. Because, like, yeah, he's got a big nose, but he also still looks like a normal person. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think it should just be a dude with a big nose. Yeah. That's exactly. I think the minute you push it further, it becomes weird. That's like a kink level that I'm not ready to see in Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the leather capes and stuff, but no. That's a that's an interesting place to take it. <laughs> and on that, uh, let's not talk about Emperor Penguin here. Let's move on. That's it for the podcast. Thank you so much for listening to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason. Yes, my feathers look like a tuxedo inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Jason, will you please dismiss the class? Class is dismissed. Whack, 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 whack.